Welcome to the Live Healthy Now series. We are so happy that you have chosen to invest in your health. The presenters for the series are Beverly Edwards Haynes, Pastor Errol Lawrence, and Pastor Cameron Caranco. Please join us every Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday evening at 7 p.m. The Live Healthy Now series runs from November 12th to the 27th. Tonight's topic is Nutrition 101. Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for the knowledge that you have given the presenters and allowing them to share it with us. As we listen and learn and invest in our health, help us to remember to share what we've learned with others. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for loving us and for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Now on to you, Sister Beverly. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to night two of Live Healthy Now. Let's get started with our recipe video right away. It's a smoky chickpea and vegetable soup. You're going to love it. Didn't that look delicious and so nutritious, chock full of those chickpeas and the red lentils, the carrots, the tomatoes, all those beautiful colors, tons of antioxidants and phytochemicals happening right there. We'll talk about those two words in a little bit. We just want to thank Life and Health Network for permitting us to use their excellent recipe videos throughout this session, the series. And we want you to visit their website because they've got so many resources for you there. You can read some articles, you can take some courses. There's a ton more recipes to look at. So definitely mosey on over to their website. Well, last evening, Dr. Danielle Fullerton shared with us some strategies about how to get our minds ready for change. This evening, I'm going to start diving into the New START acronym, and hopefully there's some things that you're gonna learn that you're going to want to change. So last night's episode with uh, the doctor was really timely to get us ready, get our mindset ready for the change. So, N is for what? Nutrition. You know, you really are what you eat. And in this time that we're living in, with infectious diseases like COVID-19 running rampant throughout society, it is more than ever important that we eat as healthy as possible, that we live as healthy as possible. 
It's not the food in your life after all, it's the life in your food. What are you feeding your body? Are you giving your body life-giving food? Or are you feeding it dead food? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Well, let me start off our discussion on nutrition by you know, just giving you a few sad statistics, some unfortunate statistics. Did you know that roughly a third of our Canadian population currently has diabetes or prediabetes? 11 million Canadians, and we only have about 37 million in our population. That's almost a third of the Canadian population that has diabetes. It doesn't have to be that way. Changing to a plant-based diet, or a mostly plant-based diet even, getting some exercise, getting good rest, all the things we're gonna talk about with the new START acronym, these things can start to reverse our diseases. Well, look at that, $30 billion that we spent on diabetes care alone in 2019. Someone in Canada every seven minutes dies of a heart attack or a stroke. These kind of statistics are really so sad and you see some more right there with respect to cancer. And cancer and heart disease are right now our two biggest killers in our Canadian population. These are really sad statistics. And then there's more. Our food supply is altered. We're ingesting way too many drugs for all of the diseases and illnesses that we have. These things, drugs, medications, are poisonous to our bodies. We have to remember that we cannot be drugged into good health. Those drugs are not doing us any favors. They're just kind of staving off the inevitable. They're not curing, but we can start to reverse disease by changing our lifestyle. So I hope that you will start to understand that as we go along and want to make those good changes that will bring about these things in your life. Well, I hate to be the, the bringer of bad news, but did you know that caffeine is considered a drug? Sugar is considered a drug. Caffeine stimulates your central nervous system, so it is classified as a drug. But look at the things that caffeine and sugar do to your bodies, the bad things, the adverse things. Caffeine may contribute to various cancers, including breast, colon, pancreatic cancers, bladder cancers, and you'll see that sugar may contribute to cancers as well. Caffeine is gonna increase your blood pressure. It's gonna increase your symptoms of PMS, ladies. If you want to have less symptoms during your monthly cycle, Try and stay off the caffeine and see what happens. If you have acid reflux, I encourage you, again, get off the caffeine and see what happens. Many people will take up that cup of java or whatever they wanna call it, thinking that it's going to help with their mental performance. They might be sleepy or tired and they want that jolt, but look what it really does to you. It impairs your mental performance and it also contributes to depression. Now look at sugar. Sugar is also gonna to contribute to various cancers. It's also going to increase your triglycerides. That's one of the fats that travel through, that circulate through your system and it's also going to decrease your cognitive function. Now, I know that whenever I have sugar, I can feel it right away in my knuckles, in my knees, my joints. Think about these things when you're eating. If you're starting to feel a certain way, it's likely because of something that you're eating. So, think about also when you're having that cup of coffee what we're just learning now, the caffeine in the coffee. And then if you put some sugar in there, you're just doubling the whammy. You are contributing to possibilities of cancer, increased triglycerides, 
increased acid reflux. Now, here's something to remember as well. Cow's milk, when it's combined with sugar, actually produces an alcohol in your stomach. So if you've now put some milk in with your coffee and your sugar, you've got a pretty terrible brew right there for your body. Some things for us to think about when we are drinking coffee, and many people are drinking it several times throughout the day. Well, there are some healthy alternatives to coffee. Chicory root is really quite nutritious for us. It's got some vitamins and minerals, and it has that taste of coffee without the caffeine. Lemon water. If you're waking up and you're feeling groggy and you need that cup of coffee, drink some lemon water instead. And you know what? If you put a little bit of cayenne pepper in there as well, that is just gonna cleanse your system so wonderfully and make you feel more alive. Peppermint tea is a really lovely alternative to coffee as well. It's gonna give you that little bit of pep there without all of the bad stuff that we're just talking about with respect to the caffeine. Healthy alternative to sugars when you're making your desserts or whatnot, have you considered dates? totally natural, fantastically sweet. Or just use fruits. Fruits are the perfect sugar because they're packaged brilliantly with fiber, with phytochemicals, with um, other nutrients that are just gonna be so cleansing to your body. So think about these things. The next time you want a sugar hit, have some fruit instead and your body will certainly thank you. What else about drugs and our altered food supply? Well, a lot of our food is just filled with chemicals, filled with preservatives that aren't the best things for our bodies. Our water supply is polluted. Milk, if you're drinking cow's milk, that has a lot of things in it that aren't so great for your body. Antibiotics, hormones, other things like that, not the best thing for you. I want you to think for a second, what is cow's milk really for? It's for a baby calf to help that calf grow nice and big and strong. It's not for human consumption. It's for that baby calf. So something to think about. There are lots of plant milks on the market these days that are actually very good for you. Uh, you think about soy milks, there's hemp seed milk, oat milk, so many, almond, cashew, so many milks on the market that are actually very good for your health. You might wanna try one or, the, one or two of those. Let's see what else, flour. The flour is stripped of its nutrition and then it's enriched with a few other minerals or vitamins and it's not the whole flour that it started out as. When you are shopping, think about looking at your labels. We must be label readers. And if you're purchasing bread, for example, make sure it says whole something, whole wheat or whole spelt, whole rye, whatever it is. Not just an enriched product that was first of all stripped. Get the good breads that are whole wheat or whole whatever it is. Let's see, we're eating too many oils. We're eating way too much meat. We don't even need meat in our system to begin with. We're eating too many fast foods. And then we are looking at vitamin supplements to try and make everything good again. But that's not the way it works. So. Let's continue with our nutrition talk. When we look around the world, at many of the cultures that aren't as affluent as we are here in North America, we see that they're still eating mainly off the land. Vegetables, mainly vegetables, with maybe a little bit of fish or meat here and there. And they're happy and healthy. There's one particular photo, here's another. Again, you see it's mostly 
plant-based. But then when we come to affluent America, affluent Canada, here's the kind of thing that we see. Are you ready for it? Look at that, the pizzas, the convenience food, the crinkly bags. I tell my clients, make sure you're eating a colorful array of foods, but this is not the kind of color that I'm talking about. You see, it all comes down to the choices that we make on a daily basis. There's an interesting, a humorous story about a group of children at a school, and it was lunchtime, and at the, there was a buffet kind of spread for them. And at the front of the table there, the beginning of the line, there was a bowl of apples. And a teacher had written a note saying, take only one, God is watching. Well, at the end of the buffet, there was a platter of chocolate chip cookies. And one of the students had written a note saying, take all you want, God's watching the apples. Humorous, but it reminds us about the choices that we make on a daily basis. I'm not saying not to have those chocolate chip cookies, but just make sure to have the apples more often. Have you seen any of these famous quotes? Let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. This is how we need to think about our everyday eating. As well, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in proper diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. I'm really glad that there are many doctors today who are starting to take that route with their patients instead of just prescribing a pill for every ill. And many years ago, Dr. Osler had this to say, 90% of all conditions outside of acute infections are directly traceable to diet. It is so true. Every time we raise our fork to our mouths, we're either giving ourselves life, feeding ourselves life, or we're kind of feeding ourselves death. Remember, 90% of all our conditions are directly traceable to what we have on our plates. We are what we eat, and so we need to eat to live. Throughout my presentation today and tomorrow's presentation on nutrition, I'm going to be trying to answer the questions, what does a plant-based way of eating offer us? Because I want to turn your attention to plant-based eating, to the joys and the benefits of eating more plants, getting more plants into your everyday eating. Next question, are the health benefits associated with plant-based eating scientifically true? Can we really eat, can we really get all the nutrition we need eating only plants? And isn't plant protein inferior to animal protein? These are what we're going to be covering. And I want you to remember, I've got that COVID symbol there because it's so important today because of diseases like COVID. It's so important that we get serious about our nutrition. Do you remember this lady I introduced you to just yesterday? Her name is Ellen White. And over a hundred years ago, this is what she had to say about plant-based nutrition. She said, Grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables impart a vigor of intellect that is not afforded by a more complex and stimulating diet. She also said, it is a mistake to suppose that muscular strength depends on the use of animal food. Now you'll remember she's a Christian author from back in the 1800s and she was included on the Smithsonian's list of 100 most significantly, I can't even say the word, 100 most significant Americans in US history. And that's what she had to say over a century ago. Does our science add up to that today? Let's have a look. Dietitians of Canada and the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has this to say. Appropriately what? Appropriately planned 
vegetarian diets are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and they provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. These diets are appropriate for all stages of the life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, and she goes on, uh, they go on throughout the life cycle. Isn't that amazing? This is saying what she said over a hundred years ago. Is there more? Let's look at what Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine has to say. Now, they are an organization that does a lot of research with respect to plant-based eating. And these are some of the headlines that they have on their website from various journal journals around the world. So, plant-centered diets lower the risk for cardiovascular disease in middle age. Fantastic. Vegan diets, optimal for growth in children. So we're seeing that, you know, the stages of the life cycle right there. There's more. Plant-based diets decrease your risk of death from prostate cancer, gentlemen. And also, they are best for the treatment and uh, prevention of diabetes. But look at the center one there. That's what really caught my eye the other day. Plant-based diets are linked to less severe illness from COVID-19. If you change your way of eating and living to a more plant-based way of eating and getting more exercise and rest and all of that, you can have a less severe illness from COVID-19 if you are infected in the first place. Fantastic to know. Anything else? Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, again, this is what they have to say. Plant-based diets, low in fat, are a powerful way to achieve good health. Diets focus on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. Avoid saturated fats associated with heart disease, diabetes, and they go on and on. It's all adding up. The same thing that Ellen White said over a hundred years ago, our science today is corroborating all of that. So why does a whole food plant-based way of eating work? First of all, phytochemicals. Can you say that word right wherever you are? Phytochemicals, antioxidants. Those are big words for you know, substances in your body, in the foods that you're eating that are going to be so fantastic for your good health. Fiber, if we are eating plant-based, we're going to get fiber. There's no fiber in animal-based foods. You can only get it in plant foods. And we should be trying for 30, 40 grams of fiber every day. You're going to get that if you're eating a variety of plant-based foods every day. Less saturated fat, no cholesterol. Now, I've got some question marks after that because after all, don't some plant-based foods have cholesterol in them, like avocados or coconut? Well, to answer that question, I want you to take your right hand wave at me, and then put it right around here on your body. Do you know what organ is right there? That's your liver. Actually, someone said to me the other day, fat, underneath whatever fat you might have there, that's your liver. And your liver is the only organ in the entire known universe that can produce cholesterol. So you produce cholesterol, Frankie the fish has a liver, so he produces cholesterol. Bessie the cow produces cholesterol. Does an avocado have cholesterol? No, it does not. So there is no cholesterol in plant-based foods. There is some saturated fat, but it's a good fat in that plant it's encased with all kinds of other things, phytochemicals, antioxidants, all kinds of nutrients that make it a good fat for our systems. Well, there's gonna be way less sodium, there's less sugar, there's less additives when you're eating whole food, 
plant-based. And when I say whole food, I'm talking about eating the apple instead of drinking the apple juice or eating the apple pie, eating the whole food and making sure it's plant-based. And as well, when we are eating whole food plant-based, it's going to engender um, animal compassion. It's going to help us leave a gentler footprint on the earth and it's going to help reserve earth's resources. After all, think about all the land, all the water that goes into animal husbandry. If all of that was put into plant, plants, you know, agriculture, it wouldn't even have to use so much land, it wouldn't have to use so much water, we'd be, res we'd be reserving the earth's resources. And finally, whole food plant-based way of eating is going to strengthen you physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Talking about strengthening us physically, do you know that there are so many athletes right now who are transitioning to a plant-based way of eating? And they are doing that because they are finding that their, their output is even better when they're just eating plants rather than eating animal products. So they're winning at more things. They're faster, they're stronger, they're better. And that's what we know from the science as well. Something I want you to think about, disease is the result of toxicity or deficiency. Often we are deficient in minerals or vitamins because of the things that we're eating. Often our disease is a result of being toxic from all the things, the minerals, not the minerals, but the toxins that are accumulating in our system, the toxins in our foods, especially if they are animal-based. So remember this particular statement, that disease is the result of toxicity or deficiency. And that will go a long ways to helping us resolve whatever illnesses come our way. Also, that whole food plant base that I was just mentioning, I want you to keep that in your mind when you're shopping, grocery shopping for your food. We want to be getting more, purchasing more whole food, plant-based foods. I like what this organization had to say. Proper nutrition is vital to good health. Food that is devitalized cannot supply the vitamins and minerals that it lacks. Therefore, it is of utmost importance that we choose wisely the food that goes on our plate. We are what we eat. Now, it's interesting to me that yes, that Christian author, Ellen White, talked about whole foods, plant-based back in the 1800s. And it's fantastic that our science is corroborating all of that today. But look at the Bible. This is really interesting. In the very first chapter of the Bible, Genesis 1, verse 29, where God says, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. So if you believe in the Bible, way back in the very beginning of time, God gave to Adam and Eve plants to eat, the fruits to eat, every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth. This is back in the very beginning. Isn't that amazing? Totally amazing to me. Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, I talked about them just a few slides ago. They came out with this new four food groups um, guide many years ago. And I loved that. I used it a whole lot um, in many of my talks and such. And it was really interesting me to me that in 2019, our Canada's food guide was changed to resemble that PCRM food guide more closely. And it's so great because look at what we have here. Half of our plate should be vegetables and fruits. Um, Health Canada 
is encouraging us to eat plenty of vegetables and fruits every day. And then a quarter of your plate should be protein foods. And what's really neat here is that Health Canada is going the extra mile and including more of the plant-based foods in the food guide. So you'll see there, there's some nuts, there's some tofu, there's beans, fantastic. And then they're saying the other quarter of your plate, choose whole grain foods. You heard me talking about the whole wheat, the whole rye, whole spelt. Make sure it's the whole food. And look at what they're saying about water. Make water your drink of choice. Not milk, not fruit juices, not coffee, water. So I was just so thrilled when this came out in 2019. Canada's Food Guide really has it going on these days. Fantastic. So let's talk uh, quickly as we finish up about things that we should be removing or at least decreasing from our everyday eating. First of all, processed foods. And that includes all of those, in, those convenience foods that we buy in the crinkly bags or the boxes. Remember, we're looking to eat more whole food, plant-based. So I've got there isolates included in that processed food. If you are eating, if you're eating, for example, um, protein, like a whey protein or a pea protein even, if it's an isolated protein that you're having in your shakes, it's not the very best thing when we take something out of its natural um, environment. So we want to be thinking whole food, plant-based. Definitely, I've been talking about removing the animal products from our everyday eating. Think about your physiology when you're thinking about animal products. Your physiology, your body, is not well suited to assimilating animal products. Think about your jaws, your teeth. You don't have the same jaws and teeth as a carnivore does. Your intestines, you don't have the same intestinal length as a carnivore does. Yours is much longer than, let's say, for example, a dog's. So a dog will eat some meat and it only has a short intestinal tract to go through because that way it gets in and out quickly so it doesn't putrefy you've got a much longer intestinal tract there and things are you know taking their time going through and if you've got a lot of animal products you're going to be having things putrefying in your system and so we want to look at our physiology think about how we're created and eat accordingly the animal products does include dairy products and eggs a lot of people will say to me Oh, but dairy is so good for you, isn't it? We talked a little bit ago about how dairy is really for that baby calf. Let me tell you a quick story about me and dairy. When I was younger, I used to wake up every morning and sneeze about 20 times. Throughout the day, I'd have to make sure I had Kleenex with me because my nose was always dripping and I was always having sinusy kind of feelings, you know, really um, ragged sinuses. And one day when I was in my 20s, I went to work and I didn't have my usual breakfast with my milk and my yogurt. And it occurred to me around lunchtime that I was not sneezing, that my sinuses were not aching. And I thought, well, that's different. That was the first time in my life. Well, the next day I went to work. I had had my breakfast that day with my milk and my yogurt and I was back to sneezing and all the rest of it. And I just had to wonder what was different yesterday, why I wasn't sneezing and achy yesterday. And I thought, could it be the dairy? I'd heard something about that. And I thought, could it be that? So the next day I didn't have my usual breakfast with milk and, and yogurt. No sneezing, no aching sinuses. And I thought, okay, this is too good to be true. 
I went home, I, the next day I had my usual breakfast with the dairy, with the yogurt, sneezing all day, dripping all day. I couldn't believe it. It was that simple. All I had to do was get rid of the dairy and I didn't have the aching sinuses. I wasn't sneezing all day. I wasn't dripping all day. I didn't need to take Kleenex with me everywhere I went. It can be as simple as that. If you are experiencing those same things I was, get rid of the dairy and see what happens in your life. Let's move along here. Uh, alcohol, caffeine, soft drinks, got to get those things out of our diets. Free oils, if we're ingesting a lot of oils, salad dressings have a lot of oils, fried foods, let's try to steer ourselves away from those. Salt is a biggie. There's a lot of salt in processed foods. So we want to cook our own food as much as possible and decrease the salt and the sodium. Sweets and sweeteners, oh, that was a downfall for me. I love sweet things. But when we start eating more fruits, when we start eating more vegetables, and in particular, more greens, we'll talk about this tomorrow, we're gonna to start to see that our cravings for sweet start to go down. Trash. Let's remove the trash from our homes. If you've got things in your cupboard, in your fridge, that we've talked about this evening that aren't so good for you, it's time to take out the trash. That's what I'm talking about. And let's add more raw foods. Having more raw is so fantastic for your good system, as long as you're chewing it really well. Chew that food so it's kind of a milky texture, creamy, before you swallow. Raw foods, we're talking about fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, fresh vegetable juices are fantastic for us. We'll talk about that another evening. Smoothies are really good. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Some green smoothies, fantastic. Um, especially if you're a diabetic, you want to be drinking the smoothies more because it's got the fiber in it rather than the juices that could spike your, your blood sugar. Talking about cooked foods, what should we add? Beans, whole grains, vegetables. There are so many kinds of beans. And you saw in the recipe tonight, they had several different beans right in that soup. We need to be increasing our nuts, like the walnuts. Cashews are nice as well, pecans. Our seeds, pumpkin seeds, for example, are really fantastic for your good health. The grain milks, I talked about those already. There's almond milk, rice milk, and so many others. The nuts and seeds we talked about. Add these things to your everyday eating. Look at this beautiful color. Isn't that fantastic? That's life, feeding yourself life-giving foods. So then we come to the question, can we really get all the nutrition we need eating only plants? We'll continue with that discussion tomorrow. But let me just leave these two pictures with you. These large land animals, what do they eat? Where do they get their protein? Something that we'll talk about in tomorrow's discussion. So come on back tomorrow. But before I finish up today, here's a really good resource for you. Go to wildwoodhealth.com slash blog. They've got all kinds of good things for you at that website. More recipes, articles, all kinds of good things for you to just enjoy. So that was our discussion tonight. Tomorrow evening, we'll be back, but sit tight because right now, Patricia Radlin's gonna have some gorgeous music for you. And then we're gonna finish up with some words of inspiration by either Cam Caranco or Errol Lawrence, depending on which channel, which YouTube channel you're watching. Thanks so much, everyone.
Good evening again, everyone. It's so good to be with you. What a privilege it is to be able to open God's Word and explore uh, the spiritual lessons He has shared there in that book for each one of us. Last night, we explored reasons why we can trust the Bible and that it is the inspired Word of God. I don't believe that God dictated uh, word for word to the prophets and they wrote it down word for word. I believe that God inspired their thoughts, and that as a result of that inspiration, they wrote their thoughts down in their own words and through their own life uh, uh, screened and uh, delivered through their own life experience. Do you know that the Bible is under attack today? Um, instead of adhering to the biblical account of a seven-day creation week, many scientists and people follow the science, so to speak, that uh, the earth was uh, created over uh, uh, long uh, periods of time with uh, uh, small changes due to mutations and so forth, natural selection. And uh, uh, that theory is referred to as the theory of evolution. And it uh, discounts a young earth. Instead of being 6,000 years old, it's uh, more like millions or billions of years old. And it certainly phases out the whole concept of uh, an intelligent designer, that is God, that planned out this great creative uh, process and uh, placed man on this beautiful earth to look after it. You know, some, some have compared the origins of this earth being attributed to, say, the Big Bang or an explosion in the, the cosmos as an explosion happening in a printing press. And as a result of that explosion, uh, the unabridged uh, uh, version of the Webster's Dictionary comes out fully intact and uh, without any errors. That really is illogical to think that way. And actually, many of the processes in the human beings on this earth uh, are a result of uh, very intricate design. 
and things are interconnected and it, uh, the things go in cycles. So the idea of uh, this happening by itself as a result of a cosmic explosion is uh, very far-fetched to me. And I believe it takes more faith than putting your faith in an intelligent designer and a seven-day creation week. You know, I choose to put my faith in a creator God who designed this world because he is a God of love and desired to have relationships with us, his children, who he created and placed on this earth. He designed man and woman to populate this world so that he would have someone to share his love with. I want to direct your uh, attention to Genesis. We're going to read a few uh, verses from Genesis chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles handy, I'd invite you to get them out and open to the book of Genesis. We're going to read a few verses uh, here in the creation account. I'm beginning in verse 26. And we'll go to verse 31. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he them, him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yield, uh, yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Incredible passage of scripture here, and just want to unpack that what we can, and, and explore what we can conclude from that, uh, that reference in Genesis 1. We first find out that uh, man was made in the image of God. Uh, not sure that we look exactly like God, but we have certain features that God has given us that uh, align with his character. Man is not like the other animals that God created. Mankind has the ability to determine right from wrong and the freedom to choose between the two. He has the capacity to love God and his fellow human beings. Also, from this passage, man was to have dominion over the earth. In other words, he was put in charge. God blessed him. And then God told them to be fruitful and multiply. Judging on the population of the earth, I think we've been pretty good at that uh, admonition from God, don't you think? And then God gave them the perfect diet. From this passage, and as Bev has been drawing out, the perfect diet included fruits, grains, and nuts. And we find that the animals had a similar diet as well. I want to take your attention now to Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to read verse 7 together. And this is the uh, further uh, the account goes into a little bit more detail of the creation of man. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Wow. So I want you to picture this in your mind's eye. God personally getting down and forming man out of the dust of the ground. And then he leaned over him and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God actually giving Adam the kiss of life, so to speak, or the breath of life. You know, Adam's, I find it interesting that Adam's first conscious thought when he got that spark of life was to open his eyes and actually looking, he was looking into the face of God. What an experience that must have been. A God who loves him and took a personal interest in him and created him. The God who created a beautiful garden for him to enjoy and take care of. Isn't our God amazing? The creation account for woman is carried on a little later in chapter 2. Let's go to verse 20. So Adam gave, uh, gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, 
there was not found a helper for him or comparable to him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he, meaning God, took out one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Verse 22, Then the rib which the Lord had taken from man he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they both were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. You know, what a beautiful description here of creation of, of the woman. Um, he took a rib, actually caused Adam to sleep, took a rib out of his side, which indicates that the, the wife should be by the man's side, equal to him, a help meet to him. And... Uh, you know, just, just as the creation account is under attack, so the def definition of the family is under attack as well. After God had formed Adam and Eve, he caused Adam to go into a deep sleep and perform the first surgery procedure done on this earth. He removed a rib from Adam's side and fashioned Eve from that rib. What a beautiful story. I envision God performing the first wedding ceremony right there for Adam and Eve in that beautiful garden that he'd created for them. You know, I believe that uh, creation as a theory and evolution as a theory both take faith to believe because no one was there to know exactly what happened. But, uh, you know, if I was to put my trust, and I do put my trust in the creation count as opposed to the evolutionary theory because at the end of evolution, that's it. There's nothing. You die. There's no hope for a future. There's no hope of an eternity with a God that loves us. I love the creation account, which uh, uh, includes an um, intelligent master designer who loved humanity enough to create a beautiful earth for them to occupy and created a man and woman and blessed the family and pro provided the first wedding ceremony in the Garden of Eden. You know, God... God has a very different end game for human beings than adhering to the evolutionary theory. And that's where I want to put my faith and trust this evening and throughout the rest of my life. You know, we will be exploring this story of a loving God and his plan for humanity in, as we progress through our series night by night. So I just want you to consider, where do you want to put your faith tonight? In a theory based on millions and billions of years, uh, with its origins of a, a cosmic explosion in the universe that formed all of this beauty that we see around us, that's hard for me to believe. I want to put my faith and trust in a loving God. Don't you? I invite you to bow your heads with me tonight. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for the beauty of the earth. Even though sin has scarred it, that there's still beauty that we can enjoy in our relationships with one another, our relationship with you. I pray you be with each one of our listeners as they ponder. What should they put their faith and trust in? A scientific theory that uh, uh, purposefully leaves you out of the equation or believe in a God who lovingly created this earth and created each one of us to be in relationship with him. I'm looking forward to the day when he comes and he's going to fulfill his promises and take us to be with him in heaven. May we be ready for that great day and may each one of our listeners be ready as well. I pray this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Thank you for joining us and investing in your health. If you have any questions or would like to speak to someone, please fill out one of the contact cards that appears on the screen. Please join us tomorrow evening when the topic will be Nutrition 201. I look forward to seeing you then. Mm -hmm.